Meanwhile, in Nepal, China is under investigation. Kathmandu has put a Chinese project under the microscope. This is about the Pokhara Airport. Pokhara is Nepal's second biggest city. In January this year, it got a new international airport. It was built by China. It turned out to be a debt trap. Now, this is not a new story. It's a classic case of China's predatory lending. China makes big promises. Massive and unsustainable projects are commissioned. In the end, the host country is left with a giant debt burden. Now, most nations just accept Beijing's terms. Some even make compromises with their sovereignty and submit to Beijing's bullying. But Nepal has decided to take a stand. Their anti-corruption agency is investigating this project. And Kathmandu has, has good reasons to order this investigation. This project has many loopholes. The first one is its practicality, its viability. Did Nepal even need an airport like this? The answer is no. This is an international airport, but Pokhara does not get many international passengers. The airport opened this year, earlier this year. It took six months for one international flight to land. In fact, let me give you the specifics. The airport opened on the 1st of January 2023. The first international flight landed on 21st June this year, a full six months after opening. And it happened to be a Chinese flight. A Sichuan Airlines aircraft brought some athletes. They were visiting for a quote-unquote goodwill boat tour. So traffic is clearly a problem if you have one flight in six months. And this has been a jinxed project from the word go. It was first conceived way back in 1975, but stalled for many reasons, like public opposition, dodgy contracts, and in the final stages, the Wuhan virus pandemic. So it took almost 50 years for the airport to see the light of day. And when it did, China was quick to take credit for it. When the airport opened, China declared it, and I'm quoting again, that it was a flagship project of the China-Nepal Belt and Road Cooperation. But remember, the project was commissioned and pitched some 50 years back. The BRI did not even exist then. Yet China is calling it a success of the BRI, and that statement has not aged well, because for Nepal, it's more reliability than a success now. Like with most BRI projects, the airport was built with Chinese loans, loans to the tune of $216 million. And these loans came from the Import-Export Bank of China. And what were the interest payments like? $3.2 million annually. So Kathmandu has to pay Beijing $216 million as a principal amount and $3.2 million every year as interest. And that's not all. Nepal also has to bear the operational cost of this project. We don't have a figure for that, but running an airport is not cheap. Running an international airport is not cheap, certainly. And here is what Nepal has been left with. A dead piece of infrastructure, a large loan, and a loss-making airport. So they've ordered an investigation. Investigators recently visited Pokhara. They spent a few days at the airport, assessed its construction quality. And going by some claims, the building quality was compromised. The project's infrastructure was, quote unquote, not sound. There were at least 20 complaints about the construction quality. Do you know who the contractor was? A Chinese company, China CAMC Engineering. This is part of Sinomac. It's a state-owned Chinese conglomerate. It builds tools for construction. And what does China have to say in its defense? Well, Beijing has defended the project. It says China CAMC implemented strict quality standards. And Nepal will take some time to come out with a full report. But once it does, once it's ready, Kathmandu should make this report public, expose China and its predatory infrastructure projects.